you will notice that you see before you on the screen three different polyhedrons. These are not regular polyhedrons because they do not share the exact same faces. So remember, to be a regular polyhedron, all the faces must be identical regular polygons. I'd like to take a look today at each of these three figures that you see before you and do a comparison of the number of vertices, edges, and faces. So let's take a look. Here first is the square pyramid. Let's count the number of vertices on the square pyramid. And we'll put the answer that we get for the number of vertices up here. So let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five vertices. All right, let's take a look at the number of edges, and we'll do that in a different color. And we'll put that up here, and we'll call it E for edges. And I will write their number right on each edge. So this is one edge, two edges, number three, number four, number five back here, six, number seven, and number eight. So there appear to be eight edges on this figure. Finally, let's take a look at the number of faces. So we'll do the number of faces in green. And this will be a little harder to see, so I'm going to put a dot in the middle of each face. So this right-hand side face would be one. The front face here would be two. The one over on this side would be three. The one on the very back would be face four. And then we have down at the very bottom, the bottom face, which is five. Now I want you to notice, if we take the number of vertices and subtract the number of edges and then add the number of faces, what do we get? Well, in this case, it's 5 minus 8 plus 5. And 5 and negative 8 would be negative 3, negative 3 and 5 gives us an answer of 2. All right, let's see if the same thing happens on this particular figure. This is a pentagonal prism. I'm going to follow the same procedure. First, I will do the number of vertices. Now, this time, I guess I'm doing them in black. So here are the number of vertices. Okay, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, going down to the bottom, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 vertices. All right. Next, let's do the number of edges. This time I'll do that in blue. So here's the number of edges. There is one there, two, three, four, five, around the top. Let's go to the bottom. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there are the five vertical edges. So that'll make 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So our number of edges is equal to 15. All right, we'll do red this time for faces. All right, so I'm going to go to this face over here, which is kind of the back right, so that'll be one. Go over to this one here, which will be two. This one here, which is three. The front face there, which is four. And the right-hand face here, which is five. 
And of course we have the top face, which is six, and the bottom face, which is number seven. So we have seven faces. So let's do the same thing. Let's take the number of vertices minus the edges and add the faces and see what we get. So 10 minus 15 plus 7. And of course, uh, 10 minus 15 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 7 gives us the answer 2. Let's try the next one. This is a hexagonal prism. All right. We'll start the same way once again. We'll go black for the number of vertices. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six vertices on the top face, bottom face, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have 12 vertices. All right, let's go to edges. For our edges, we have one, two, three, four, five, six edges going around the top. On the bottom face, we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, and we have the six vertical segments. So let's count those. So this will be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So we have 18 edges. And now let's do the faces. So for our number of faces, we have the face here in the back, so that'll be one. This one over here, which is two, coming around towards the front. There's three. There's one here on the front, the very front. Four. This one back here. Five. Okay, I think I might have missed one here. I think I missed this one. So this is the sixth face. All right. Then we have one on top which is the seventh face, and of course the bottom face or base of the prism, which is the eighth. If I take the vertices minus the edges plus the faces, what do I obtain? 12 minus 18 <coughs> plus 8. 12 minus 18 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 8 is equal to Two. So you notice each time, for each of these three figures, we obtain the answer two. For the vertices, minus the edges, plus the faces. The mathematician responsible for the discovery of this relationship in polyhedrons, name was Leonard Euler. He lived from April 15th of 1707 to September 18th, of 1783, and he was a Swiss mathematician and physicist. He made important discoveries in such fields as diverse as infinitesimal calculus and graph theory. He also introduced much of the modern mathematical terminology and notation that we use today, particularly for mathematical analysis. He also is, did renowned work in mechanics, fluid dynamics, optics, astronomy, and music theory. Euler is considered to be the preeminent mathematician of the 18th century and one of the greatest mathematicians that have ever lived. He is also one of the most prolific mathematicians. His collective works fill over 60 volumes of about 640 pages each. He spent most of his adult life in St. Petersburg, Russia, and in Berlin, Prussia. Note this tetrahedron. I wonder if the platonic solids share the same property that we have just seen in the prisons and pyramid we work with. Here, of course, is the octahedron. 
and of course here is a dodecahedron. Well, it doesn't take too long for one to take a table of the various properties of these figures and to notice that if you do V minus E plus F in each of these situations, you will always obtain the answer to. So this formula, V minus E plus F equals 2, is referred to as the Euler characteristic for all polyhedrons. Thanks for listening.